So what about Munshi Abdul Karim? Munshi Abdul Karim, oh, actually his father had two sons, uh, Munshi Abdul Karim and Munshi Abdul Aziz. They, uh, I mean, he um, was very, I mean, uh, in those days, there were no aircraft or no nothing. They, they used to fight with uh, uh, this uh, animals like uh, horses and uh, uh, elephants. So their father used to be a veterinary surgeon. So he even went to Afghanistan and he could speak many languages. And he made sure that his two sons got the best education. So he, um, they, could, they were put in, in such a school that they could learn English. And in those days, just to learn little English was, you know, considered very great. So my grandfather, uh, great-grandfather, Munshi Abdul Karim and his brother, they both learned English. But um, Abdul uh, Aziz was not fond of studies and all. He was more fo fond of looking after the Jayadad, you know. Property. Property. And he was, uh, he wanted to work. So he was given a job um, in uh, Central Jail, which was quite near Karim Lodge. And he would supervise. And they, they used to teach uh, um, uh, these prisoners how to do the, this uh, carpet. So he would select the colors, he would tell them what colors to use and all. So in those days, when he was there, so the coronation of Queen Victoria was taking place. And there was great uh, preparation for that. And this particular carpet was to be sent to uh, Queen Victoria as a gift. So it has to be very intricate and very, everything had to be perfect. So that carpet went there and uh, she really appreciated it. She saw it and she said, then, you know, she asked few people to come uh, to uh, England so that she could learn Urdu because these uh, dignitaries were coming from uh, India, like Rajas, Maharajas and M Malika and Queen. And they had little, um, what do you call them? Uh, they, um, Unki apni thi. Ra Jaipur, Raja Maharaja Jaipur and Jhansi or, and all these places. So he wanted to learn some Urdu so that he can learn some etiquette, Indian etiquette, how to receive them and all. So four of them were selected to go to um, India and um, Abdul Karim was one of them. So when he went there, so he was not uh, given, um, obviously being a, in those days like white and black, so he was a black. So uh, they, they wouldn't give him anything uh, nice. W what they did was send him to his, uh, as a table boy. He went there and he said, no, I haven't come here for this. And he, re uh, he attended it, but after that he said, I'm not going to go there. Um, send me back to Pakistan, India. So the queen, something uh, went up to the queen and she said, what's the matter? She says, this is it. This, she said, no, he'll only teach me Urdu and let others do the job. So this is how she, and my great grandmother also went to England. And she's the one who taught us to do knitting. Um, and uh, she, in those days, it used to take months and weeks and months to reach London because they had to go a long way. Uh, I don't know whether this canal was there or not. Uh, so, so. Uh, so they had to grow. And they only could uh, travel because the ships used to be very small. They could only travel when the sea was calm. So few uh, months were there when they used to travel. But she went there and stayed with him. And even in Windsor uh, uh, Castle, there's a, a no place known as Karim Cottage. Karim Cottage is the place where, where my great grandmother lived, and it's still there in Windsor. Um, so this is it. And if you go to Isle of Wight, there's a lot of photographs of my great grandfather there. His pictures. Uh, some of the uh, pictures are even we've got uh, from there. Um, but uh, this is it. So this is my life in Agra. It's been wonderful. Where, and where did he buried? Uh, he was buried in uh, Agra, and we had our own um, graveyard. Uh, and only our family members could be buried there. But now I think it's open, but uh, there's still not many people there. Where is that? In Agra. Where in Panchgunni, Pan, Pan, Panchgunya is known as. That's Ur in, uh, Pakistan, in Indian Muslim graveyard in uh, Agra. So his name is still there, his grave is still there, but the grave has changed in the sense that only the headstone uh, is there with his name and his all the degrees that he, that he got, OAEC, or what, I don't know what, what. 
but uh, the marble and those intricate uh, things like uh, rubies and pearls, they are no more there. They're just a slab there. And, uh, but I was glad to go and have a, see that. And not only that, actually I, I, want, I went to graveyard just to um, see my, uh, my tires, Mahmoud's uh, grave there, just to say um, some prayer for it. But somehow it happened in uh, 47 and took, um, partition took place in um, 27, 14th April, August, August huh? and he expired in 29th, on 29th August and it was very sudden so all the um, thing like on his grave I mean is, is there but uh, unrecognizable but my grandfather's grave is there what's your grandfather's name? his uh, Dipti Abdul Rashid and uh, the, the my, my headstone is there and you know it was mom um, it was uh, engraved. engraved. The black thing is gone, but you can still read that he died of heart attacks. Um, 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 uh, yeah, uh, that sort of thing. That's date of birth and uh, when he died. It's all written. And even Madhvin Baji's father is there. His grave is there. And the oldest graves that I saw there of our very uh, old people. Mother ancestors, I should say, was uh, uh, 1918. 1918, that was for the two graves. That's still there. It was a, a pink marble, a very t small graves, but the, and the date, uh, date of birth and their um, names are there. So that was it. I remember of Agra, but I was really happy to go back to. And you know, in a hotel, when, I. When did you do that? What year did you do that? Uh, what year was it? Like. Uh, we went uh, in, uh, about uh, two, three years ago.